Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to show you how I made these fabric face masks. This tutorial is a little bit different than my usual content here on the channel, but what with everything that's been going on in the world with the COVID-19 virus, a lot of areas, including where I live, have recommended that people start wearing face masks when um, going outdoors, going shopping, just leaving the house. So um, I just wanted to share with you guys all of the methods that I used for making my own face masks. First of all, I want to say that I know that fabric masks are not entirely effective in preventing the spread of COVID-19, but any protection is better than nothing at all, and actual medical equipment should be reserved for medical workers. Also, my partner Joey, who you all may know from our occasional Whip Wednesday live streams, is classed as an essential worker, so he's been going out every day to work, he's been going to the grocery store for us to keep us supplied, so Joey does need to leave the house, and also it's important for everyone who's stuck at home to try to get outdoors every once in a while if you can do so safely, so I've been wearing these to stay a little bit more protected when I do go outdoors. I also want to point out that this tutorial is based on a technique that I saw on With Wendy's channel. Her tutorial was also based on some tutorials from other people's blog posts. It was really helpful to see Wendy's demonstrations of these techniques, but the one that I liked and made for this tutorial was a little complicated, so through the process of making these, I have picked up a couple of techniques that I think makes it a lot easier to understand. I also changed the design a little bit to make it function a little better. I was able to fit a wire into the top of the mask so that it can be formed around the nose and cheekbones to make it fit a little bit better and form a better seal around the top of the face. And I made a version of the mask with long fabric ties instead of elastic. If that's more comfortable for you, you can make that style of mask instead using this tutorial. I'll put a link to the video on Wendy's channel in the description just in case you want to check that out. And I'll also link to the original blog post of this design if you want to check that out as well. To make these masks, first you'll need to cut out your fabrics. First, I cut out one 14 inch by 8 inch rectangle of cotton fabric. I just measured and tore the fabric since every piece I'm using is a plain rectangle. If you're afraid to tear the fabric, feel free to cut out your fabric with scissors instead. Next, I tore out two 1 and 3 quarter inch by 6 inch rectangles. For this particular mask, I used all the same fabric for the whole thing, but in the tutorial I used a contrasting cotton fabric for this just to make it easier to see what I'm doing. To make the ties at the back of the mask, you could either use two 6 and 3 quarter inch strips of flat quarter inch wide elastic to make the loops that fit around the ears, the original tutorial used 6.5 inch strips of elastic here, but I found that to not be large enough for us. Use as much as you need to comfortably wrap around your ear from cheek to chin. Or you could make fabric ties with 4 1 inch by 16 and quarter inch strips of fabric. These can be a contrasting fabric or the same fabric, I'm just going to make mine match the mask fabric. You'll also need a sewing machine, some thread that matches your fabric, an iron or a hair straightener, I just used my hair straightener since this was such a small project, you'll need some scissors, some pins, you'll also need chalk or something else to mark your fabric. And if you want to add wire into the top of the mask, you'll need craft wire and a tool to cut or shape your wire. Before I begin my work, I'm going to press all my fabric to make it a little easier to work with. I just used my hair straightener, but if you'd rather use a proper iron, you can do that too. Now that all my fabric is pressed, I'll fold my 14 by 8 inch rectangle in half with the right sides touching along the longer side so that the folded rectangle is now 7 by 8 inches and is inside out. Then I'll pin together along the 8 inch side of the rectangle. And I'll sew along that side with a half inch seam allowance. I'll 
All right, I finished sewing my rectangle. Now I'll flip it the right way out and press the seam with my flat iron. This seam is now going to count as the top of the mask. Next, I'll make the wire that goes along the top of the nose of the mask. I did this using plain 22 gauge craft wire. First, I pulled out two inches of wire, then I folded at the two inch mark and pulled out another two inches of wire, wrapping around to form a one inch long loop. Then I pulled out another five and a quarter inches of wire and I made another one inch loop at the other side. Then I wrapped another layer around two times to add a bit of strength. The final finished wire size is about seven and a quarter inches long, triple wrapped with one inch loops on either side. Next, I'll insert and pin the craft wire into the top seam that I just made at the top of the mask. And I'll try to have the folded seam allowance behind the wire to add a little bit of padding behind the wire. There should be about a quarter of an inch of empty space on either side of the wire at the sides of the mask to account for the seam allowance for the next part. Now I'll sew the wire into the mask with half an inch of seam allowance, and I'll make sure to be very careful not to hit the wire or the pins with my needle. Now I've pretty much finished sewing the casing for the wire. However, since the sides of the mask are still open, the wire could still fall out, so just be careful not to drop it. Next, I'm gonna pin and press some pleats into the middle front of the mask. This is the part of the tutorial that I had a little trouble following, but once I figured it out, I found an easier method to do this part that I'll show you now. First, I'll make a little mark using my chalk one and a half inches down from the top of the mask, which is the side with the seam and the wire. I'll make that mark on both sides of the mask. Then I'll make another mark about one inch down from that first mark. Next I'll fold the mask into the first pleat by bringing the first mark down to line up with the second mark. Then I'll use my flat iron to press that little fold into place. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side of the mask. Once I've pressed both sides into the same fold, I'll grasp the fold on each side and pull them outward from the middle. And that will help the fabric at the middle of the mask fold itself into a pleat across the front of the mask. Then I'll just iron the middle of that first pleat into place.
To make the next pleat, I'll do the same thing, except this time I'll make my first mark on the side of the mask one half inch down from the fold of the previous pleat. Then once again, I'll make my second mark one inch down from the first mark. Then bring the first mark down to line up with the second mark and use the flat iron to press the fold into place. And do the same thing on the other side. Next, grasp each fold on each side, pull outward from the middle to form the rest of the pleat, and flat iron into place at the middle. Then I'll make one more pleat by repeating exactly the same thing. First, I'll make my first mark on the side of the mask one half an inch down from the fold of the previous pleat. Then I'll make the second mark one inch down from that first mark. Bring the first mark down to line up with the second mark. And use the flat iron to press that fold in place. Do the same thing on the other side. Then grasp each fold on each side, pull outward from the middle to form the rest of the pleat, and flat iron into place at the middle. The pleats at the front of the mask should be facing down from the wire towards the bottom of the mask. This is important to note because in the next step, I'll attach the elastic or the fabric ties to the back of the mask. For the elastic mask, I'll pin the two elastic loops to the corners at the back of the mask. So I'll flip the mask over so now the pleats are facing up towards the wire at the top of the mask. Then I'll pin one elastic loop to the corners at one side of the mask, meeting up the raw edges and pointing the loop towards the middle of the mask. I'll be very careful not to twist the strip of elastic when I pin it down. Then I'll pin the other elastic loop to the corners at the other side of the mask in the same way. Next, I'm going to sew down the elastic straps to the sides, but first let me show you how I made the fabric ties. I did this in a similar way to how I ironed the pleats. First, on one side of the strip, I folded up the bottom third of the strip, and folded down the top third of the strip, Then I flat ironed the fold into place. Then I did the same thing at the other side. I folded up the bottom third of the strip, folded down the top third of the strip, then I flat ironed the fold in place.
Then I did this again at the middle. Fold up the bottom third, fold down the top third, and flat iron in the fold. I kept doing that until the entire 16 and a quarter inch strip was ironed into thirds. Then I used a short, wide zigzag stitch to sew down the full length of the strap. Go over the seam two or three times, just to make sure that the raw edge is locked down. I did the same thing to make all four straps. Then I pinned each strap to each corner at the back of the mask, with the front of the strap facing out and the back of the strap facing the mask. If you want, you could tie the straps together to make it easier to manage. Now I'll sew the pleats and the elastic straps, or the fabric ties if you made that version, together, with a quarter inch seam allowance. Be careful at the part of the seam that's at the top of the mask, I just used the hand control at the side of my machine to do that part, just to make sure that I avoided hitting the wire, though for this part I really didn't have to. You could also just move the wire towards the other side temporarily when making this seam to keep it out of the way while you sew if you're worried that you'll hit the wire with your needle. Next, iron the 1 and 3 quarters inch by 6 inch rectangles in half along the short side, with the wrong sides of the fabric touching and the right sides facing out, so that you now have a thin 6 inch strip. Now I'll pin each strip to the back of the mask, I'll take a strip of accent fabric and I'll place it over the elastic loop, 
with the raw edges matching up and the clean folded edge facing towards the middle of the mask, and about an inch or so of excess on each side. Next, I'll fold the excess on the side over to the front and pin down the accent fabric on this side. Then fold the excess on the other side over to the front and pin that down as well. Now I'll sew both sides down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once again, I used the hand control at the side of my machine, but again, it would have been easier to just move the wire toward the other side temporarily when making the seam to keep it out of the way while you sew. Next, I'm going to flip out the accent strip towards the front of the mask. Then I'm going to fold the strip over to the front of the mask and sew it down. But first, I'm going to trim the corners of the accent strip fabric at the front, where I folded over the excess in the last step to make it easier to tuck that fabric in under the strip when I fold it to the front. So I'll just trim off the corner on each side. Then I'll fold over the strip of accent fabric towards the front side of the mask and pin it in place. Since there's a lot of layers of fabric here, it's a little hard to put the pins through as I normally would, so I started to place my pins first through all the layers of fabric at the edge of the accent fabric then back through just at the bottom layer of the fabric, just to kind of tack the fabric down while I sew it. And finally, I can top stitch the accent fabric down at the front of the mask as close to the edge of the strip as possible. Once again, I used the hand control at the side of my machine when making the part of this seam that's at the top of the mask where the wire is. This time, I actually do recommend that you use the hand control for this part, because you could potentially hit the wire since it runs along the full length of the top of the mask. So work slowly and use the hand control for just the part at the top of the mask, just to make sure to avoid hitting the wire.
And now my fabric mask is done. Here's a few shots of me and Joey trying on our new masks. I made five of these so far. The pleating, in combination with the wire at the top, allows this mask design to be worn on a variety of different face shapes, which I love. This project is such a good use for scraps of fabric. I was able to use up some of my tiny scraps that I never thought I'd find a use for while making these. I love the way each one turned out. They all look so different, even though they're all the same basic design. The fabric ties also help make this mask a lot more comfortable. Which one do you like best? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you use this technique to make a fabric mask of your own, I would love to see your interpretation. You can find all of my social media links in the description below, or you could tag me on Instagram at LizFairy. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you could press the like button or share it on social media. And if you'd really like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can get some pretty cool perks through Patreon, like seeing my videos early, access to some of my prototype patterns, and discounts in my Ravelry store, depending on your level of donation. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You could also subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching, try to stay home as much as possible, and stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!